We end today's show in Arizona with Dr. Deshaun Taylor, an OBGYN physician, abortion provider, owner of Desert Star Family Planning in Phoenix, Arizona, the only black-owned independent abortion provider in Arizona. Her upcoming book, Undo Burden, a black woman physician on being Christian and pro-abortion in the reproductive justice movement. Can you respond to what's happening right now, the climate we are in, the judge's decision Friday night out of uh, Texas um, that would, if it is enacted, um, overturn a more than 20-year-old FDA decision to make available a pill that is responsible for more than half the abortions in the United States? Dr. Taylor. Good morning. As the founder and CEO of Desert Star Family Planning in Phoenix, Arizona, I have seen for 10 years firsthand how access to the safe and highly effective, me effective method of medication abortion with mifepristone and mesoprostol improves the lives of my patients. It is increasingly being used for miscarriage management as well. And it is very disconcerting how the reproductive autonomy of millions hangs in the balance in a case brought by known anti-abortion extremists with no real scientific merit. It is leaving pregnant people and the clinics that provide care for them in limbo as we figure out how this plays out. Um, the Food and Drug Administration has reviewed mifepristone several times over the 23 years since the medication was approved and reached the same conclusion as other regulatory agencies in other countries that medication is safe and effective. And so it is just extremely heartbreaking to consider the idea that the most common method of abortion across the country could no longer be available to people who need it, especially in this climate that we're in right now, where there are whole populations, whole regions of the country who don't have access to an abortion provider. Last week, Arizona Governor Katie Hobbs, now the Democratic governor of Arizona, vetoed Senate Bill 1600 that, if passed, would have forced doctors to treat fetuses that have no chance of survival and require hospitals to report all abortions performed to the Department of Health Services. Can you talk about the significance of the new Democratic governor vetoing this bill? My gosh, we are just thankful that we have that protective backstop of the governor's veto. Um, I will share that we already have a so-called fetal born alive law in Arizona. It was signed by a then Republican governor back in 2017, I believe. And so when I saw this bill going through the legislature, I'm like, what are we doing here? We're rinsing and repeating. Like, this is, there are more important things that we we need our legislators to be doing um, when they go to the state legislature. And so, especially in light of us operating under a 15-week abortion ban, really what SB 1600 would do was would be making more traumatic birth outcomes worse for families that are already suffering and honestly would not have any impact on abortion at all, considering we aren't providing abortion care in Arizona beyond 15 weeks. I wanted to ask you about all these reports that are coming out right now. The rate of black maternal mortality increased by nearly 26 percent between 2019 and 2020. Um, Vox reporting black women seek abortions at the highest rate and will face greater rates of maternal mortality without to re the right to choose under Roe. And AP reporting, if you are black or Hispanic in a conservative state that already limits access to abortion, you are far more likely than a white White woman to have one. And if the U.S. Supreme Court allows states to further restrict or even ban abortions, minority women will bear the brunt of it, according to statistics analyzed by the Associated Press. Uh, Dr. Taylor, if you could explain. So these disparities in health care in general exist. And so they're, we're seeing them exacerbated as it relates to reproductive health care. We know that black people are 
impacted greatly across all areas of healthcare, all disease states. We see that Black people are sicker and are dying more exponentially of across the board. And so when we look at pregnancy, we have to understand that some of this mortality is related to the fact that there are inequities in health and the health of Black people. And so those don't disappear automatically once someone becomes pregnant. And so when we are banning abortion, then what we're doing is we're creating a situation where people are forced to continue pregnancies that are dangerous to their lives. And so we have that, that part of it where people are sick and pregnant, but then we also have the inequities in access to health care and the treatment of people of color by the medical industrial complex as it relates to um, complicit uh, inherent bias in all these things that people are being forced to check boxes and do DEI about. But ultimately, the racism in the country is reflected in the medical system. And so we have a whole host of systems that are acting against people of color and uh, increasing their chances of dying during childbirth. Dr. Taylor, I also want to ask you about undocumented immigrants. In New York, um, there is a real push right now to get the governor, um, Governor Kathy Hochul, to sign off on health care for undocumented immigrants. Um, you are in Arizona, of course, which is, uh, to say the least, a, a uh, a border state um, where undocumented people do not have access to health care. Can you talk about what access they have when it comes to reproductive rights to, um, to abortion? There are a lot of laws that really impact in a negative way an undocumented person's ability to access health care. We have ID laws. We have ICE presence near um, facilities that provide health care. We have checkpoints where people would have to go through. Potentially, they just pop up in places. And so there are a lot of opportunities for people to become ensnared. Um, we have actual evidence where health care workers call immigration authorities on, on um, patients who are undocumented, who are just trying to help take care of themselves. And so the, it's a real obstacle, um, a real hurdle for people who are in the country and they're undocumented. And I always want people to understand that someone's documentation status does not mean that they don't have basic human rights to health care. And it's just extremely distressing to see how this plays out. Mm -hmm. I will say that we in Arizona have some practical support organizations. There's a lot of community um, support to help all people seeking abortion get the care they need. But there are some s specific interests in, in making sure that our undocumented um, brother, uh, sisters get the care that they need. And also, too, what we're seeing is an increase in self-managed abortion through herbal remedies and other types of things, as well as uh, misoprostol only, has been increasing over the course of time, just because of all the restrictions that already existed in Arizona. Dr. Deshaun Taylor, we want to thank you so much for being with us. OBGYN physician, abortion provider, owner of Desert Star Family Planning in Phoenix, Arizona, only black-owned independent abortion provider in Arizona. Her upcoming book, Under do Burden, a black woman physician on being Christian and pro-abortion in the reproductive justice movement. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.